Hey guys, welcome back. This time I'm going to quickly go over how to connect two NPCs together. This is just going to be one way. There's two or three ways that I'll try to cover, but I'm going to go through this one that I prefer. It's not necessarily the most flexible, but when we, I'll show you how to do it with flags later on. and It'll give you a couple more avenues to take. Um, but this way makes the most sense to me. And it starts by having two NPCs. You have NPC A on this side, NPC B on this side. Each one has their own script assigned. The key here is NPC A is telling you, uh, I need you to go talk to NPC B. Prior to this interaction, NPC B isn't expecting you, and for that reason, you want them to have a fairly generic response. Uh, depends on what you're doing this for. This could be anything from just hello to I, you need to talk to NPC A first, whatever you want it to be, but they have a fairly generic response. And then the trick here is you have to, you put a second step in the script for NPC B, which will be step two, and we'll make a click trigger. And then, and now, this is where we chat. Oh, NPC A must have sent you. So this is where you start doing the things that happen in response to you going to NPC B at the request of NPC A. And to get NPC B to this point, you need to zap to step two. And every time we've used zap so far, we've only been using it within the same script. What you can do, though, is in the NPC A script, you can zap script NPC B, which is the name of this script over here, you can zap that to step two. So instead of zapping this current script to step two, you can zap NPC B's script to two. So even though this NPC may be on the opposite side of the world from this NPC, when the player gets there, in whatever time frame it takes them, this NPC will be ready to respond with whatever information the player needs to know now that it's time. What's also helpful is if you use another zap command and just do step two, which defaults to the current script, you can then open up another step on this side, uh, just like so, and say, you know, chat, thanks for going to see NPC B for me. So then when the player comes back here, um, it doesn't keep telling him to go over there, it, you know, it, it, move, it progresses both NPCs in the same script. And you could do something similar on this side, where you can zap the script for NPC A to step 3, and then, you know, on this side, you can just pretend like they've talked to each other or whatever, have another click trigger, and add a chat command, NPC, whoops, NPC B, such nice things to say about you. Whoops. So when you do it this way, you can chain them back and forth just by changing steps. This could be a third NPC. This could be, you know, you could change the step of, you know, 10 different NPCs right here. Say you had a, a simple quest like, go get me 10 wood. And once you finished that, um, you wanted to open up a, another five or six quests to the player. Well, all of those NPCs could have a generic first step. And then once they've completed a pre-quest, we'll call it, then they can you can zap all of their steps down one for the player, and then the player will have access to all of their scripts. I find that to be the most straightforward way for what I do when I script, since I do mostly questing and things like that. Um, in my next video, I'm going to show you a quick way of doing it with flags instead, which will be a little bit more generic and won't require you to zap each individual NPC if you're doing a whole lot of them or if you're not coding all of your NPCs with the intent of them working together. So it's a little more flexible, but I really like this strategy and I hope it makes some sense to you guys. If you have any questions, just leave me some comments. I, I get back to them pretty quickly. Um, once again, please subscribe. Keep on viewing my videos. I, I like to see a lot of people are watching them. I know it's helpful. And I'll keep trying to make them as often as I can.
Thanks, guys.